Hey, everybody, it's CJ Graham, Jason Voorhees. That's right, Friday the 13th, part six, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Hey guys, Slash Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today I'm joined by CJ Graham, the actor of Jason in Jason Lives and Elias Voorhees in Friday the 13th Vengeance. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing great myself. And it's actually funny because uh, I think, yeah, two days ago I acted your, uh, I guess your old boss, Tom, Tom McLaughlin. And oh, yeah. uh, he wanted me to say hi to you. And uh, he also uh, wanted me to tell you that you still owed him five bucks. You know, I probably owe more than five bucks after all these years. Uh, <laughs> you know, he took, you know, he just took some guy off the street, basically, and made it an iconic image that 30 plus years people are still talking about it. So five bucks is probably a good deal. All right. <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> Do you have any new projects coming up? Well, I just finished. Uh, 13 Fanboy, uh, a couple months back. That's a Deborah Voorhees film. Uh, it also has Kane Hodder in it, Laura Park Lincoln in it, uh, Corey Feldman in it, and of course, Dee Wallace. Um, and it's a, a interesting spinoff that Deborah Voorhees has put together with uh, conventions, horror conventions specifically, and a fan that goes crazy and starts killing all the horror iconic images like myself and Kane Hodder and others. Uh, I get to be lucky I don't die in this one. My brother Kane Hodder does die, uh, but I get to be somewhat of the hero in it with the big fight scene with the person, and I'll let it go at that because I ain't going to give you all the details. My understanding will be out later this year. All right, awesome. I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so to go back to Jason Liz, how long did it take for you to get into the Jason costume? Well, it took, you know, when we first started it, there were some, you got to remember, they shoot uh, a movie out of sequence. So some of the scenes when we first were taking full makeup at the, which wasn't the beginning, was towards the middle. Um, it was taking three, four hours to get all that makeup on because my face was fully exposed uh, per the scene inside the cemetery. Uh, that took some time to get it all on. Now, once I got out of that scene and stepped out, put the hockey mask on, the simplicity because the front of the mask was gone as far as the prosthetics and I just flipped a mask on and I was ready to go to work in an hour and a half. Awesome. Um, and do you have any fond memories of the set of Jason Lives? You know, I think, you know, fond memories, the cast, the crew, uh, the cast, they were all so professional, uh, you know, uh, you, when you look at Tommy McLaughlin and what he did, how he wrote and directed it, and then you start looking at uh, Tom Matthews, and you start looking at all the other actors and actresses that were in it, uh, they were great. You know, it was my first film, my first major production. So for me, I was just doing my job. Tom would direct, and I would jump in and kick some butt. Um, but those folks are the ones I appreciate. You know, they allowed me to physically pick them up, throw them around, take their heads, throw them into the side of a mobile home, uh, take their head, throw it into a camera for the for the details, how close. And they really gave me command of their body. You know, um, I I didn't have any uh, stunt people for me. I was a stunt man, so I did all my own stunts. But even Tom Matthews, you know, he did probably 90% of his stunts himself. I mean, the underwater stunts, he was with me quite a bit until we got to some of the near the end. Uh, but there were quite a few that he was underwater with me 20 feet, breathing off regulators and doing a fight scene. And that wasn't his specialty. That was just that he was that good at what he did. So I'm um, fortunate to be working with a professional crew. That's awesome. Um, and were you in the Jason costume for the Alice Cooper music videos and uh, promotional photos? We did all the promotional things for it. Um, Alice Cooper and I see each other on a regular basis. In fact, I just got an email a couple days ago this uh, coronavirus has really stopped the world economically and, and functionally. You know, doing these videos is probably the best thing right now because people are really digging into media from a different perspective. But I was able to do things. I just got an email for a show called Days of the Dead in Atlanta in August where Alice Cooper is going to be there. It's a convention. Um, you know, uh, Atlanta, Georgia has opened up for the most part. 
So I told him if, you know, if, if, if everything continues the next couple months, let's do it. So uh, I do see Alice. I did see Alice about six months ago. Um, in the last year and a half, I've been doing some conventions where Alice attends. Um, I sit next to Alice. We take photos, autographs, and then I put the wardrobe on and do photo opportunities with the fans and Alice Cooper. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, because I was and always wondering. An old war story about Alice Cooper is he was the first concert I ever saw in my life when I, in 1972. I was like 16, and uh, I go see Alice Cooper on stage. And then to be working with him, you know, 15, 18, 20, 30 years later now is kind of a crazy, but it's also an honor. That's really cool. Yeah, because I was always wondering if that was actually like you in the Jason costume. Uh, and on Wikipedia, it says it is, but I just wanted to have that like confirmed by you. Uh, yeah, we did a lot of functions, uh, even in the past. The interesting thing is about three years ago, uh, a friend of mine, Kane Hodder, who played Jason in 7, 8, 9, 10, he uh, did a wardrobe uh, for part seven. Uh, it took like three, four hours to do the wardrobe. So financially, it wasn't really rewarding for him to do it for a convention. However, my wardrobe is simplistic enough that I was able to put it together and it really was successful and has continued to be successful. And now everybody is doing wardrobes. Uh, you know, if it's not Tony Todd, Candyman, uh, then you're seeing other people from other movies doing full wardrobes now, just like the, uh, the wrestlers are putting their, for, their makeup on their wardrobe and doing photos with the fans. And it's kind of nice because, you know, when you get that wardrobe on and you put that mask on and your fan comes around the corner and you don't talk anymore, you just physically stand there and they start talking to you thinking, oh, this is great. I can't believe it. And you don't say a word. They start getting intimidated. So <laughs> it, they they leave with a nice experience. Um, sometimes, depending on the person, they want me to grab them and I'll grab that little T-shirt they got on and lift them a couple inches off the ground for the photo. And <laughs> you can see the smile and the reaction on their face. Uh, they walk away happy, and that makes me feel good. That's awesome. Um, and what was the most fun scene to film in Jason Lid? Well, I think the most, I, I guess the most fun scene to me would be the, the scene that I consider the best for me, my first scene. And you have to understand, I'd never been on a movie set. First time I put the wardrobe on, the first scene that I even shot was the scene where you see the motorhome behind rocking and Jason steps in profile turns, looks at the motorhome, and then tilts his head, and then starts walking towards it, that'll always be my most fun and favorite, because, I mean, you know, it was the first time I got the wardrobe on, it was the first time I got to see what was going on on a movie set, so I'll always have, you know, heartful toward that, um, but as far as fun, every day was fun, you know, the sun went down, we came out, the sun came up, we went to bed, so we all <laughs> were, vamp we were vampires for about eight, nine weeks. Uh, and then we came back to Los Angeles and they were finishing a few things and uh, realized they had some extra money in the bank. And Frank Mancuso Jr. called Tom McLaughlin and sent him out to Griffin Park to film three more kills in Griffin Park in Los Angeles. Awesome. That's cool. And uh, then like a reverse question, what was your least favorite scene to film? Like maybe the hardest to film or just like a living hell? You know, I don't know about the living hell or hard because I was always so pumped on a drill, a drill in. I would say the hardest scene, though, was the 20-foot underwater scene. And the reason for that, we were in an Olympic-sized diving pool 20 feet deep. I was physically chained down to the bottom with a real chain, as you can see in the movie, and standing on a center block, just a regular one-foot by eight-inch center block. And I was there all night long. And I mean all night. Every once in a while, they take the chain off, bring me to the top, and I'd look at a, a, a film and watch on just a little monitor what we were doing. Tom would give me some direction and send me back down. I'd take a breath, two breaths. I would pull my mask down, and I could hear the camera, and we'd start the fight scenes. Um, and when I needed air, I would signal for air, and the safety divers would swim in and give myself, Tommy Matthews, or his stunt double, uh, Michael Nomad air. So it was cold. There was a point where the safety divers were wearing uh, wetsuits and they were complaining about how cold it was. Well, at that point I was numb 
you know, I was in, a, you know, just wardrobe. And, you know, finally, by the end of the night, Tom said, that's it. We're done. Let's get out of this water. So I ran right to the shower outside the pool area and just stood there for 30 minutes warming my body up <laughs> in full wardrobe. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, and how do you stay in such good physical uh, shape? Um, I, you know, I, I still do pretty good. Uh, I do go to the gym four times a week when I was young, you know, I was going to the gym six days a week, uh, just an hour and a half a day. It wasn't serious. Now I still go for 45 minutes, four times. Um, I'm still, I, I weigh 255. I was 243, 240 when I did the movie. So I'm still within that bracket. Um, and I just try to maintain, it's kind of been a lifestyle more than just how do you, um, to me, since I was in the military back in the 70s, I've just always maintained physical characteristics. Um, you know, I, I, I think the most important thing is the lifestyle. You just have to stay within certain boundaries and perimeters of your food intake, your energy, and what you do. Um, and you can't use your age for an excuse. That's just not fair. You can't use excuses. And I know people go through a depression and they may use it temporarily, but at the end of the day, You know, those French fries look good, but, <laughs> you know, they'll stick to my hip just like anybody else. Right. Okay. Um, and if there was any other horror character you could play, uh, a good guy or a villain, who would it be? Um, let me think about that. That's a good question. I've never been asked that direct question. So, I, number one, my, my smart Alec remark would be, are there other horror characters? I thought Jason was the only one. <laughs> uh, but since you say good or bad, you know, um, I've always been a fan of uh, Batman uh, over the years because going back to the 60s when Batman series was out and stuff, um, I've never been a good guy, so to speak, like a Superman, you know. But I always thought Batman had a little bit of a dark side to him, a little more in and out, which fits my personality. You know, I mean... At 6'3", 255, 6'4", 255, I'm, you know, I'm big, you know, I, and I see things from a different perspective than most people, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but I think I'd like to do a Batman. When I was younger doing the acting and the stunts, uh, I always wished there had been an opportunity to play other characters because I had the physical characteristics. I would have loved to have been the only person that went out there and played, you know, Michael Myers, went out there and played the different characters that people see, Leatherface, that would have been cool to say that you played all those characters. Um, I'm still a fan, as Tom McLaughlin is, of the 60s, the old universal black and white horror. And you had Frankenstein, you had, you know, when you take a look, you had the mummy, you had the werewolf, and of course, Dracula. And those were pretty much your four principles. And in today's era, we're very blessed, 30, 40 years later, that we still have Freddy, Michael Myers, we still love Leatherface and Jason. How cool is that? That's awesome, yeah. Um, and what are some of your own favorite horror movies? Like you already mentioned, you most like 60s, just like Tommy. Yeah, I have to back up and say those are mine. I, I, I have all of those uh, on DVD because to me they're just so iconic because, you know, Lon Chaney Jr. and different people were actually doing their own makeup and creating makeup in those days for those films. Um, and if you go back and watch them, I think that's what brings people back to the horror of the 80s. Um, people like the reality of Jason. You know, a green screen is great, and you can do so much for Star Wars, and those are great, great films. But the question is, you know, is it realistic? I, I mean, I could see opening a window and a guy standing there with a hockey mask and a machete, realistically. It makes sense. It's possible. But... I think the nice thing about it is taking a look at how people perceive Jason or Michael Myers because that person could be living next door. You know, Leatherface is a spinoff, a real story, you know, of a family in Texas. So when you start thinking about that, it kind of puts a little bit of a sick spin on it. So I really do like those more because people go back to them. When I do the shows, for instance, I have children, seven, eight, nine, 12 years old, They come up to my table that are Jason fans. Most of the time, they haven't even seen the movie yet, but they play the video game. Um, right. I just I do cameos uh, request, uh, and in the last month, three of the cameos that I've done for people say happy birthday, etc. 
One was nine, one was seven, and one was 12. And <laughs> their parents are sending me a cameo request to do a cameo for their kid's birthday or because they, they can't do a convention because they're closed. And when I send a cameo to their kid. So, and then I did one for a 40 year old and a 50 year old. It's just, you know, it, it really covers a wide variety of age, age ranges. Awesome. And you attend a lot of uh, conventions and what's the, what's one of the best stories uh, from a convention? Well, you know, three years ago, I retired uh, from running casino resorts. I was a senior executive in the casino industry for many years. And when I stepped away, I thought, well, I can do conventions. It'll be fun. Meet the fans. I've only done one or two a year, maybe over the last 10, 15 years. So now I'm able to get out there half a dozen uh, times, a dozen times a year. I, and it kind of sounds strange, but the, one of the very interesting ones is I had a young man about 22, 23 years old come to my table and thank me because he was uh, a little abused as a child, meaning he was bullied. And he would come home from school and plug in the VHS of, of uh, Friday the 13th, part six, and it made him feel better. And I was like, well, you didn't hurt anybody, did you? He goes, no, no, it just made me know that there were other people out there that were different, like Jason. And he got emotional with it on my table. I mean, emotional. I was like, who thought that Jason could work as a psychologist in a horror movie? Um, so I, I think that makes me feel good. And the other thing is, when you meet the younger people, the young fans, they all know it's make-believe. There's not one of them that doesn't get it. They can't wait for Halloween or a convention because conventions are becoming uh, Comic Con, uh, the, the festivals, the Scream Fest, uh, Texas Frightmare, Monster Mania, you know, Monster Palooza. All these shows have become so incredibly important to the fans for an opportunity to dress up to their biggest fan. It could be Superman. It could be Batman. It could be the Joker. And they show up and have a good time for a weekend. So it's kind of exciting. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, will you ever return as Jason? You know, it's it's an interesting question. I'm sure Tom McLaughlin uh, may have mentioned it. Tom McLaughlin wrote a new Friday the 13th. Uh, he's finished it about a year ago. He worked on it for a few years, and he had a conversation with me about that. Um, he's seen me in wardrobe because he's seen me at the convention with Alex Cooper. He knows I've still got the structure. And he has said on tape that if an opportunity came for him to shoot, which would be a sequence of part six into seven of what he imagined, uh, and I'm, I'll let a little bit out of the bag, a little bit of it, that he wants to do it in the snow. He wants Camp Crystal Lake to be in the winter. So you can imagine the blood with all the snow. Right. But he's he's pretty much asked and said on TV uh, interviews that you know if CJ was available and felt physicality, he could do it. I'd, I'd hire him tomorrow because he's still got that structure. My response is, I look at it this way. I would do it if the script was reasonable because I don't want to go to space. You know, part six was a great uh, Friday the 13th. It was a good turning point where Jason became a principal. So I don't want to take what I did and become the comeback kid then fail, right? So if the script is good and I feel that it's going to carry on from part six, okay. And then more importantly, could I deliver a product? If I can't deliver Jason as good or better than part six, I wouldn't do it because I don't want to be that NBA player that comes back and doesn't perform. Right. Um, I'd like to just close on part six being as successful as it was. But yes, provided the right script. And yes, provided I could deliver to you, the fans, the product you expect. Awesome. So you really want to, and off on a high note. Right. I'm on a high note now. I just don't want to drop that note. But if I could right, take it to exactly. the level, I, I'd entertain it seriously. I'm a little older. And, you know, there's some things I probably could do stunt-wise. And there might be a couple I may not be able to do. Um, and that's what Tom was saying on the physicality part of it. Um, I don't feel like jumping off a roof, you know, because I hit the ground. I might not get up. I mean, you know, when, when, I, when I get bucked off my horse, I have horses. When I get bucked off my horse, it hurts. You know, when I was your age, I, you know, I jumped right back up like a rabbit. Now I lay there for about five minutes ago. That didn't feel good. Um, so I don't want to jack myself up, right? Yeah, it makes sense. 
All right. So do you have any final words for the interview? No, I just appreciate the fan base and I appreciate everything you guys are doing and stuff. Um, I, I look forward to coming back to that side of the world. I think I'm going to the United Kingdom uh, in October, if I recall correctly, this year. And, um, you know, you may or may not know, but I was up in Holland uh, last year and I was up in Germany. And then this year, this year in February, I was up in Sweden doing a show. So I do get over to the other side of the world. I'm looking forward to some normalcy in everybody's life so we can have some fun out there again. Um, I know it'll never be what it was, but at least we'll get out there and be able to start shaking hands again and, and taking right. photos with the fans. So it looks as to now, you know, some of the conventions are going to uh, start to migrate forward in August. So I look forward to seeing everybody. Uh, but then, you know, let's just keep doing these interviews and videos. If there's anything I can do for you guys, um, hey, you know, jason6.com, check me out. Um, there are a lot of people that are buying photos offline because they can't see me at a convention or they're asking me to do cameos. So I am keeping in touch with my fans as much as possible. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for the interview. This was uh, CJ Graham, Jason in Friday 13th, part six. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time. See Bye, ya. everybody. Oh! You're pissing me off, Roger. <laughs>